Simon Smart of Envy, the guy behind the new Smart System wheels themselves. Okay, do you want to tell us a little bit about the product? Right, where shall I start? Well, um, we've uh, what's unique about these wheels is that we, we develop them within a bicycle because there's a very different flow field around the bike to a wheel on its own, as you would imagine. So um, one of the most obvious things that's different is the front and rear rims are actually a different design because the front wheel, um, one, one here, would be um, designed for the, the clear flow around the, the wheel, whereas the rear wheel is actually obviously behind the seat tube, so you have a, a different um, scenario. So we have different widths and depths, front to rear. Um, and also we have uh, worked very hard on the, the shape of the rim to give us um, a good compromise between drag and stability. So it's not just about reducing the drag of the wheel, it's also about making it rideable. Otherwise you can end up with a very fast wheel that you can't actually hang on to and that's not really any good to anybody. So, uh, What's your background then with uh, design, wheel design? Where do you come from originally? Well, originally my background is from Formula One. I was an aerodynamicist and an engineer in Formula One ever since I left university, so I've been in motorsport for about 15 years. And um, that became really huge, and I've always had a passion for bikes, so I wanted to take some of that technology and see if I could apply it in the bike industry. So, in fact, the first project I had in the bike industry was designing a, a time trial bike. Um, and went, which is now the giant trinity, this was some years ago now, and what was quite interesting is obviously we, we designed it in the wind tunnel and tried to, um, like I'm just talking about the flow field, um, trying to simulate the flow field as closely as possible, was, we had to like have the wheels, put wheels around the frame to develop the frame, so have spinning wheels, and you start to see the interaction in the frame and the wheels, so that's what really alerted me to the importance of understanding the, the quite complex sort of aerodynamic interaction of, of the two, two components. Um, so when it came to finally designing some wheels some years later, I you know, immediately wanted to develop them around bikes. And of course, you know, you, ultimately you could design a, a frame and a wheel that works together as one would be your ultimate thing, but in the real world you, know, you have to you design an aftermarket wheel that you try to design to work as best as you can in, in a wide range of frames. And that was kind of the biggest sort of challenge really, was to understand the differences of all the frames in the market and try and get something that would pretty much work in all of them. So, you know, for sure that it, it, it might be a stronger performer in one wheel in one frame than another, but overall we're confident that you always get really good performance. What's the time frame it's taking you to develop the wheel then? Um, develop, started developing this wheel um, in, in, in anger the beginning of 2010, so it was about a, a year of development, um, but b before that there was quite a lot of work in, in developing instrumentation because um, one of the things I'd learned from working with riders and, and athletes was that the big problem with a lot of the wheels in the market were that you couldn't really ride them, so it was super fast in the wind tunnel and I'd have a guy come in the wind tunnel and I'd say, ah, oh, this is the fastest wheel ever, buy this wheel. This is not wheels I, I, I made, just you know, just the best ones in the market. And they'd go and ride it and come the end of the year they'd say, I didn't ride that wheel at all because it was just, I couldn't handle it, you know, it was always too windy or whatever, so I never used it. So I realised, you know, it was really important to understand the stability of, of the wheel and how it felt to ride. So one of the first things we did that sort of lengthened this project was it's really important to um, develop the instrumentation and the tools to actually achieve a, you know, a, a good product. So you, it's more, more like there's as much skill in coming up with um, a me methodology that is accurate and gives you a direction as it is to actually designing the product. So a lot of the work went into that and then once we were happy with that. So for instance, we, we developed a new system for measuring the steering sensitivity of the wheels in, in the wind. Um, and then we tried to characterise that by taking a load of known wheels off the market that I knew for experience that people would like to say, oh that's a good handling wheel or that's a bad one. So we tried to test those in the wind tunnel and see if we could get some correlation between the, um, the stability that we could measure and people's sort of kind of subjective opinion of a wheel. Because it's a really hard thing to kind of understand because flow, you know, wind in itself is pretty chaotic so you can never really compare two people's feeling and alone with their experience of different winds and different days and you know, blah 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 so we try to put some science behind it so we could actually measure stability rather than it just being like uh, that's a stable wheel and that's not. So it's a complete revamp from the original Envy wheels that were clearly that's right, really yeah, good I, anyway. When I first met Envy um, the, the, so this is the, the more traditional aero shaped rim um, which is 
tends to, is, is very good at lower yaw angles, um, but tends not to perform as well at higher wind angles. Um, and I was just blown away when I first rode these wheels about the, you know, the mechanical efficiency of them with climbing and you know, power transfer. I just knew that if we could combine the great mechanical qualities with the aero shape, we'd have a, a really nice product. So for the everyday folk, folk out there, who don't know about your angles, what's, can you just put that in layman's terms basically? Because okay, yeah, there's a lot, you read it in the magazines and people like, are supposed to know what it is, but there's a lot of people out there who haven't got a, a clue I suppose. Well I mean, obviously when you, you know, when you ride, if there's no, no, no wind at all, you, know, you, you, you ride along and you've got a wind that's going effectively at the given speed of travel. But that, that happens very rarely, and usually there's a wind. And so the compound, if you add the, the mix, this, effectively the two winds together, you get um, an angle. So it's you know you might have a pure headwind or a tailwind, in which case the your resultant speed is either going to be higher than what you're actually travelling at, or lower. Um, so that's one scenario. But generally, there's sort of a more of a chance that it's going to be a crosswind. So that wind gives you a resultant wind of anything between sort of 0, 15, 20 degrees of your angle. So basically the, the faster you go, the less likely it is to have a high your angle. So if you tend to be doing time trials, you're unlikely to have a, see a wind angle of greater than 10 degrees. Sort of um, slower speeds, you know, fast road riding, slow tri triathlon crossing, you know, 10 to 15 degrees. So each of the wheels, the new wheels are designed for specific jobs, like the, 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 each of the, the depths are designed for different That's, that's right, bases, yeah, we, different... We, when, we, when we sort of got, got into developing the wheels, um, rather than, you know, we all know that you, know, you kind of, you can make a rim deeper and make it more aero, generally, um, but then there's a weight penalty and there's a trade-off between the two. And it's, so we try to like just break it down into different categories of, of what people use and design wheels for that application, rather than kind of, so we try and thought of the problems in the application, designed to solve the application, rather than just coming up with a load of different wheel depths and, and then saying, there you go, find the one that's best for you. And um, we, you know, we, I think we're still learning and look forward to all the feedback we get over the, the future seasons of different people around the world who have different demands for different terrains, different wind conditions as to what's right for them. But that's right, we, we went for um, the climbing, sort of climbing wheel, aero climbing wheel set, which is, uh, we, we try to make these wheels kind of as shallow as possible to get to get the weight down, whilst still having a, a good aero benefit. That you, you, are, you do feel like you're riding an aero wheel, but at the same time, so on the flat rolling, Sections, you still got the, you still carrying the speed and have the aero effect, um, but they're also great in very very strong winds. But then as soon as you hit a climb, they, you, you feel that sort of snappiness and lightness and inertia as you as, as you come out of the saddle, lack of inertia. And then likewise on on the descents, we really worked on the stiffness set, so it really feels like you're cornering on rails. So that I think you know a lot of very light wheels, you tend to they're great for climbing, but not so good for this descending. So. It was kind of like make the wheel as good as it can to ascend, but at the same time you've got to still make sure it's great for de descending and and flat riding. Um, we've then got the sort of mid mid depth rim, um, which is a sort of it's a more sort of multi purpose on rolling terrain, ideal for competition triathlon um, and for road racing. Um, you know, pretty fast wheel set that you could use, and you know, you're not really ever going to give that much performance away. But also, what we're finding, you know, this year is it's working really well for lighter people that always struggle to get anything out of an aero wheel on a windy day. With this, you almost like certainly in the UK, you don't need to worry about it anymore. You can bolt this wheel on and go and compete anywhere and never really be scared that you've made the wrong wheel choice. So that's a, that's a pair I'm going to have to ask you for to give it a try at some point, eh? Okay, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> the third set, you've got three depths here? Yes, the third set is not here, then that's going to be an 85mm front, 95mm rear, and, and, and that, you know, that's, that's very deep. Um, we kind of, um, obviously, 
So they they were biased more towards speed, less the stability and weight. But actually, you know, they're, they're proven to be surprisingly stable. You know, a lot more stable than you would expect from a very deep wheel. And you know, time will tell as to what conditions you can actually use those wheels in. But they're, yeah, they're um, we've got some athletes testing them now, and they'll be on the market in the new year. You've got United Healthcare on them. I recently spoke to Cal Menzi of the team, and him being a pro cyclist, didn't know what depth he was on. The right mechanics put what he needed clearly, but he was rating them really yeah. highly. He absolutely yeah, no, loved they, they, them. They love those wheels, yeah. Yeah, you get input from the team as well, I presume. On oh, definitely. That's a that's really going to be in, invaluable over the future, you know, years to understand what you know what is the best for each condition. So, so you're, going to, you're sticking with NV and you're going to continue with the development of the, oh, the smart most, system? Most certainly, yeah. It's a long, it's a long-term project, and we've only just started. You know, we, you know, it's um, we put a lot into the into you know, the way we work together. Us being in the UK and uh, Emmy being in the States, and as I mentioned, all the instrumentation and systems we've got in place in the wind tunnel now. You know, it would be a lot to do just for one, you know, one series of wheels. It's a young company. There's a lot to come, then, eh? Absolutely, yeah. Really, really exciting times, yeah. Awesome, thank you ever so much. You're welcome, nice talking Excellent. to you. Take care, cheers. cheers.